All right. In chapter 15, you're going to be reading about one of the newer forms of victimization, and that is victimization uh, involving social media of some type. Um, when we talk about uh, social media, the internet, uh, this type of risk, think about this, about half of the world's 7 billion um, uh, population uses the internet. And just thinking about Facebook, over 1.7 billion subscribers. Uh, young people today grew up using, and this is you guys, most of you guys, uh, grew up using the internet, using social media. So it's really become a way that young people in particular communicate um, and interact with each other. When it comes to internet risky behavior, studies suggest that those who participate in one internet risk behavior are more likely to participate in other types of risky behavior, which you'll read about. But um, going online in, in, in any format is risky, depending on you know how safe you are, what type of information you share. But the more uh, risky behaviors that people engage in, uh, the more they put themselves at risk for being victimized and they increase um, the potential for mental health issues, for negative um, side effects, for um, engaging in other types of behavior offline. Um, so it really is an important topic. If you look at table 15.1 on page 569, you see a list of the various forms of social media that people use. And um, just some of the biggies, uh, Facebook, of course, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, uh, YouTube, WhatsApp, Twitter, Tumblr. Those are just some of the uh, of the various types of social media that not only young people, all of us tend to use at least one of those. Um, but the more that people use those, um, that increases the risk uh, of becoming victimized, depending on how safe you are um, and how smart you are. The majority of today's young people, again, grew up using these things and they use social media and technology really for interacting with each other. I would ask you guys, how often do you talk on the phone? The vast majority of you probably text instead of actually talking on the phone. And I myself uh, only text now and I rarely talk on the phone. Uh, so it is the way that we socially interact with each other. We share our ideas, we share our artistic creations, our photography, our paintings. Uh, we do schoolwork online. You know, we just saw that with um, all of the classes having to go online and uh, seeing not only college students who probably are used to doing at least some of their work online, but now, you know, elementary school kids and high school kids really having to do a lot of their work online as well. Uh, blogging, journaling, you know, a lot of people create blogs and then release those to the public so we can really get insight uh, into what's going on in people's lives. Um, and some people are very open, as you all know, on their social media about what is going on in their lives. Um, the types of social media victimization. First of all, sexting has become quite a problem in terms of self-exploitation and you know sexting involves sending um explicit pictures of oneself to somebody else and if you are under the age of 18 that actually is child pornography if you're sending pictures of somebody under the age of 18 including yourself to other people um now a lot of states have kind of recognized the idea that a lot of people sexed consensually with other people. And so some states have made it a misdemeanor instead of a felony if somebody sends a sexually explicit picture to another person um, that's consensual. Georgia is actually one of those states that has uh, changed the sexting laws. Electronic aggression, an increase in using um, electronic media and social um, platforms for bullying. We've really seen the the way that bullying is done um, change a little bit. You know, you used to, back in my day, at least you had to really, you know, be brave enough to be a bully face-to-face. -to -face. Today, people can 
um, use cyberbullying in which they can behind, hide behind, you know, fake profiles. They can send emails. You know, there are all kinds of, as you guys know, um, apps that you can get that will block your phone or even change the phone number. So you can um, be a bully in a lot of different formats. I mentioned that the sexting laws have kind of changed in some states uh, to provide a little bit of lenience to adolescents when they're sexting each other and it's consensual. Because again, sending pictures if you're under the age of 18 is child pornography. Um, there are still some states that, by the way, that would still consider that a felony. And if one of the um, adolescents is over the age of 18, um, there could be problems that uh, with that. Internet luring, um, this is called child luring when a minor is involved. So this is, um, when an adult or somebody over the age of 18 um, attempts through internet means or technology means to contact a minor child for the purpose of sexual contact. This can include just asking minors to send pictures, posing yourself as an adult, posing as a minor, and um, you know, talking with a young person, a minor in social chat rooms, on Facebook, on um on Instagram, sex orientation. Uh, this is kind of a newer term. This has actually come out of Canada, but this is when adults use technology to exploit children for a sexual purpose. Um, there is an example in the textbook um, where the Canadian police have identified people who go on um, websites or go into social rooms where somebody shows a picture of themselves, um, you know, naked or takes their top off or something like that captures a screen grab of that and then tries to extort that um, that minor. Um, I'm going to show these pictures to A, B, or C if you don't give me more sexually explicit pictures. So that's kind of a newer type of extra, ex, uh, sextortion, extortion that we're seeing based on uh, technology. Now, some of the mental health implications, these are kind of new things that we have um, come up with uh, based on particularly young people's use of technology and the internet. It's not only young people, but we see more people with these times, uh, types of issues. Um, definitely not something that we would have seen more than 20 years ago. So this is definitely a new thing that we're finding. Um, it includes internet addiction disorder, compulsive internet use, problematic inner use, and eye disorder. And all of these would be people that um, are having trouble um, getting away from their internet addic addiction. So here are some of the signs and symptoms of internet ad addiction, compulsive internet use, and problematic. Excessive use that is often associated with a loss of sense of time or neglect of basic drives. Withdraw, including feelings of anger, tension, depression occurs when the computer is inaccessible. Tolerance, including the need for better computer equipment, more software, or more hours of use. Negative repercussions, including arguments, lying, poor achievement, social isolation, isolation and fatigue. Um, Young, in 1998, and this was quite a while ago, designed the following questions for assessing social media use to determine if it is a problem for somebody. Do you feel preoccupied with the internet? Do you feel the need to use the internet uh, with increasing amounts of time? Have you repeatedly made unsuccessful efforts to control, cut back, or stop internet use? Do you feel restless, moody, depressed, or irritable um, when you can't access the internet? And you know, we could kind of think of these questions in terms of social media, because I think that some of the problem uh, with compulsive internet use and addiction is based on use of social media and getting feedback from social media and likes and friends and all of those things. Do you stay online longer than you intended? Have you jeopardized or risked the loss of a significant relationship, job, educational career because of the internet or social media sites? Have you lied to family members, therapists to conceal your involvement? Do you use the internet as a way of escaping your problems? So just think about the way that you see some people use social media. Um, I see it a lot with people in social media and uh, it does seem to be compulsive. They tend to share more. Um, they post the types of pictures and um, and post that would get them attention from other people. So some of the uh, the internet addiction things, 
signs that we see, email, text messaging, sexual preoccupation, excessive gaming, and I would add in there um, issues with social media sites and you know feeling agitated, feeling irritable, um, your self-esteem taking a hit if you don't get a lot of likes or you don't get as many friends. Um, suggest a brief psychosis can develop during withdrawal after excessive use of technology. Um, prevention. The American Academy of Pediatrics convened a working group to develop policy gu guidelines for parents in 2016. And when we're talking about young people, it really is up to parents to make sure that kids are safe online and that they only have so much access. And there are definitely things that you can do with uh, your computer um, that will block kids from getting to various sites. But the problem with that, even if when parents do monitor their kids' use at home of the internet, like the home computer, kids still have access to things on smartphones. Um, kids can go to their friend's house and access things on their smartphones or their computers. So parents have a really hard time staying on top of what their kids are being exposed to. Interventions with regards to sexting should address initial acts of non-consensual distribution of explicit messages, the potential for continuing harassment for others, interventions for students and adults who are upset by the sext. Um, really, I think one of the things that parents need to do early um, is to educate their children on what sexting is and the problems with it and uh, the, illegal, the illegal nature of sexting in terms of uh, child pornography laws. Just to tell you guys um, a story about uh, about sending pictures on the internet. When my daughter was in high school, she came home and told me that one of her friends was really upset. She had sent a picture of herself topless with her face in the photo to a boy that she was uh, dating. And uh, at lunch table, my daughter Shelby was looking at this girl and she was really upset and she was crying. And it turns out that the boy that she sent this photo to forwarded it to a bunch of other people in the school. So a picture that she took thinking she was sending it only to a boy that she was interested in now, you know, got sent to, we didn't know at the time, but it turns out to be hundreds of people who also forwarded that photo. So, um, a few days later, my son, who was in college at the time, came home for the weekend, and my daughter and I were talking about that photo, and I was asking her how her friend was doing, and my son said, oh, I got that photo. That photo got forwarded to my son at college, and he said that his friends at another college that was even further away also got that photo. So one photo that this girl sent, thought that she sent to one person ended up getting forwarded and forwarded and forwarded. So now um, former students at that high school who are now in college hundreds of miles away were also getting that photo as well. Um, with uh, cyberbullying and sexting, the behaviors and symptoms can overlap. The child avoids the computer, cell phone, and other technology devices or appears stressed, like my daughter's friend, um, withdraws from family and friends or acts reluctant to attend school and social events, avoids conversations about computer use, exhibits signs of low self-esteem. That's what I was talking about with the social media, including depression, um, fear, anxiety, has declining grades, poor eating habits, poor sleeping habits, not wanting to go out with their friends anymore. Those are all signs that somebody um, has... Uh, been like my daughter's friend, you know, sexting gone bad or cyberbullying where somebody is, um, you know, using technology or social media sites to instill fear in that child or anxiety. Um, identify, identifying victims of electronic aggression. The first step is have conversations with your children about sexting, bullying, and online relationships. Second step, act direct, ask directly about social media use. And again, for parents of young children, really uh, monitor um, their use as well. Um, questions to ask about cyberbullying. Have you been upset with somebody online? Has someone ever sent you a mean message? If you knew someone being cyberbullied, what would you do? Do you know where to report cyberbullying? You know, a lot of kids don't know um, 
you know, where to report this. Sometimes with bullying that happens on a school campus, kids will tell a teacher or an administrator because the behavior took place on school grounds. And there's been problems on who's responsible for cyberbullying in some cases because it it happens off school grounds. So are school officials responsible if it's hap happening on school grounds? Can kids report it to school officials if it's happening um, off off school campus. Uh, so really important for parents to stay on top of this, to educate their kids early. Now, if you're going to give your kids access to smartphones and the internet, you're going to have to have these talks maybe a little earlier than you thought. Um, all right, super interesting um, chapter. Uh, all of us need to be aware of our internet use, what we're posting on social media, our privacy settings on social media sites to keep ourselves safe. If you have any questions about anything in this chapter, let me know.